United Auto Workers President Sean Fain doubles down on support for President Biden after State of the Union address. Now, let's let's make sure we give the right financial information before I play the video. So what's happening here? This is the dynamic at play in Michigan. They see what's happening in Michigan with the uncommitted vote, with all the protests. Um, and th their lack of ability to change the minds of those people, the people in Dearborn, the mayor of Dearborn, for example, the people, um, the Arab and Muslim communities and the people that support the Arab and Muslim communities in Michigan. They're not coming off their stance. They're refusing to support Biden is throughout the polls and reflective in the polls. So they go, let's pivot to labor in Michigan, because that's the other big sort of group is the Arabs and Muslims. And then it's uh, uh, labor, uh, uh, in Michigan. So let's pivot to labor and see if we can, you know, replace the support we have for the people, the progressives, the, the, you know, young people, uh, black people of color. Let's see if we can replace those voters, that support in Michigan with labor support. That's why they reach out to Sean Fain. And what does Sean Fain do? He falls in line like a trained seal. And again, um, the headline speaks for itself, but let's get into what they're talking about. Oh, there's my tweet where I says, where I say, the face of a sellout, labor shouldn't support Republicans or Democrat. Union labor is supporting a guy who broke a strike. Now think about that. You are a union person and the person you are supporting broke a union strike. One of the bigger union strikes, too. So let's listen. He this weekend he went on this terrible show with Michael Steele, uh, Simone Sanders, and another person. It's three people that host it. It's called The Weekend. It's pretty terrible. But Sean went on there to talk about his support, and let's listen to a little bit of it. The state of one particular union got a shout out in the president's address to Congress this week. President Biden emphasized his support for the United Auto Workers Union and reminded Americans that he joined them on the picket line when workers were striking last year. Now Biden's plans to tout that union support on the road. And joining us now is United Workers Pres Auto Workers President Sean Fain. Welcome to the table, my friend. It's good to have you having the conversation this morning. Appreciate, appreciate you having me, yeah. We're so happy to have you here. There's been a, a reticence on the part of UAW to endorse President Biden. I'm curious what you can tell me about the conversation you had with him that helped you come around on that. Well, it wasn't so much the conversation, it's really the actions. And that was one thing we made clear when we took over, and when I took over as president, that our endorsements were gonna be earned, no, no longer just freely given. He's saying the endorsement, because she's asking, Tell us, why did you decide what you, you were hesitant before? And he's like, well, it wasn't a conversation. It was the actions. What actions did Joe Biden commit to support labor? Because I know the actions he did against labor, and that's called breaking a strike. They given and, and not just a party affiliation. They were going to be earned by the candidates. And so... Um, you know, I, there was some disappointment up front when I took over. I think, you know, people expected us just to make an endorsement right away. And uh, uh, but to me, there was work to be done. Uh, we had a, a EV battery transition and industry. And trans so what maybe what he's talking about is work is Joe Biden literally showing up. That's it. He showed up on a picket line and gave a speech, the speech that's so nondescript. It's words without really telling you anything. And none of the positions that the UADW held that Joe Biden said he supported. He just gave a, oh, I think you guys should get a fair contract. I think you guys should get an, a, a historical pay increase. That's it. Anyway, let's continue and then I'll, I'll move on. Transition that there, there was Electric a lot of vehicles. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of work that needed to be done in that realm so the workers weren't left behind. And, uh, um, and uh, and then, you know, obviously we had our contract campaign, a lot of work coming up with the big three fight. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of conversations throughout. But but at the end of the day, uh, you know, when we made this decision, we had to look at this. Is, this was a simple decision for us, because when we, we, we put both candidates side by side and then our big three campaign, uh, you know, we we use facts. You know, the fact that corporations have made 
quarter trillion dollars and workers were being left behind. The facts that CEOs raised their pay 40 percent over four years while workers were going backwards. And so when we looked at the presidential endorsement, we did the same thing. We put two candidates side by side and we used facts. And the facts tell a very telling picture for working class people and for our, our members in general. If you go back to the recession in 08, 09, Donald Trump blamed the auto workers for what was wrong with the companies. Joe Biden bet on the American worker and gave us a path forward. If you go to 2015. What does that mean, gave you a path forward? What the fuck does that mean? Sean, labor representative. Now, when he says, when we decided, do you think the we is the rank and file or do you think the we is the co-opted leadership? When he's talking about when we decided who to pick, because I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to this video. Let's go to another video, though, really quick here. This is a short video. This is also Sean. Let's listen. Look, let me be clear about this. A great majority of our members will not vote for President Biden. Uh, yes, some will. Uh, but that's the reality of this. Uh, the major majority of our members are going to vote their paychecks. They're going to vote for an economy that works for them. Look, let me be clear. Did you hear? If you didn't know, the majority of UAW rank and file are Trump supporters. So how in the hell did leadership decide to endorse Joe Biden when the rank and file wanted Donald Trump. How did that happen? How are how is leadership representing the union when the union don't want the person that leadership is selecting? This is him admitting that the rank and file is not voting for Joe Biden. The majority. He says a few may look let me be clear about this. A great majority of our members will not vote for President Biden. Uh, yes, some will. Uh, but that's the reality of this. That's the reality of it. That's what he said. Now let's go back to the video. That's him. Now let's go back to the other video we were watching. This one right here. In the president's address to Congress this week, President let Biden me emphasizes. Let pause it and move it back to where it was here. So let's, right here. We plan in Illinois, the same situation as Lordstown in Ohio was closed. The community was written off for dead. Joe Biden engaged us and went to work for us to, to bring that and revive that company. Engage. These are, these are, like, these aren't tangible. These are just abstract things. These aren't tangible things that he's listing that Joe Biden did. These are very abstract, something you can't really pinpoint. He's like, well, what exactly? I don't, you can't really get a, a firm understanding, a tangible understanding of what you mean by things that Biden did. Let's listen. These vague descriptions here. Oh, shoot. Is it... Let's try again. Let's see. Two plants going in there now. So when you when you compare those things, when you look at the president talking about working class people, when you look at when Trump was a candidate for president, he talked about doing a rotation of our jobs in this country, uh, rotating our good paying jobs in the Midwest somewhere else where they would pay less and have us begging for our jobs back mm. at lower pay, driving a race to the bottom. And you had... In, in 19, when Trump was president, GM was on strike for 40 days. Mm -hmm. What did Donald Trump say or do to support the workers then? Zero. Uh, Lordstown. What did he say or do? He did zero. Fast forward to a Joe Biden presidency. Did Joe Biden do zero? No, he broke the strike. Sean Fain is truly disgusting. The assembly plant was slated for closure in Ohio in 2019 when Trump was president. He did nothing. Joe Biden, when he was president, and, you know, we, had, we were on strike in 2023. Mm -hmm. For the first time in our history, a sitting president joined the picket line. Uh, Belvedere assembly plant in Illinois. A sitting president came for a photo op at a picket line. And labor is taking, is 
using that to pretend like that means anything tangible. Like that means he was on your side for what you were asking for. No, the same situation as Lordstown in Ohio was closed. The community was written off for dead. Joe Biden engaged us and went to work for us to, to bring that and revive that company. And we have two plants going in there now. So when you, when you compare those things, the state of one. Joe Biden engaged us. Like, what does that mean? Engaged us. Like I said, abstract thing. Last people, when you look at him talking about uh, not cutting Social Security, uh, not cutting Medicare, Donald Trump every year of his presidency pushed for cuts to Medicare and Social Security. Um, when you look at all it's, those things, it draws a very distinct picture. Except we have Joe Biden on video talking about cutting Medicare and Social Security. On video. We've all seen the video. This guy is fucking terrible. Sure. Joe Biden has a history of serving people and standing with working class people. And Donald Trump has a history of serving himself and standing for the billionaire class. President Payne, as you are talking, it just really strikes me that, um, you know, we, we sit around tables like this all the time. Sometimes they're a little bigger. Um, and people talk about what's not breaking through, what the American people can and cannot feel, how the administration needs to sell or not sell their policies. But what I just heard you say is that at you, that like working class people in this country, union workers, members of the United Auto Workers, they have been listening for a very long time. You bet. I mean, you know, and, and, and to me, we just have to focus on facts. And this is the problem. I, I, you know. Like facts like you just said in your other video that the vast majority or the majority or the good amount of your rank and file will not be voting for Joe Biden. And then you continue to say maybe a few. Let's also go to this uh, headline here, and I'm getting close to being done here, but let's also go to this here. What Biden and Congress move to ban railroad strike reveals. The move by Washington to override a clear vote by railroaders to reject a White House brokered contract and impose it unilaterally is a major assault on the basic democratic rights of the working class. It is also a strategic experience, the lessons of which Workers must learn all three years of the endless rounds of government mandated mediation imposed on railroaders by the Anti-Worker Railroad Law Act. And after an earlier settlement that the government and union bureaucracy sought to enforce in a vote subject to endless delays and marred by serious irregularities, workers were finally set to launch a national strike on December 9th. Workers face brutal employers who refuse to budge on essential and basic demands such as pay sick leave and scheduling that allowed them to spend time with their family. Instead, the Biden administration and Congress are moving rapidly to ban strike action and impose the deal. Biden announced Monday night that he could he would seek congressional intervention and he met with congressional leaders Tuesday. A vote in Congress where the move is supported by leadership of both parties could take place as soon as Wednesday. The struggle of the railroads, railroaders to win their demands have proved two fundamental elements of Marxism, which lay at the heart of its theory of the class struggle. I won't go into that part there. Just wanted to briefly counter what Sean Fain is saying in his video, which is a bold-faced lie, obviously. Let's bring that down and go back to the video and let him continue to throw pie on his own face. Um, let's listen just to a little bit more here. Uh, you know, uh, as I say this often, Trump's a con man. I mean, he, he likes to tell people what they want to hear. And, and he'll say anything to get a result that he wants. But at the end of the day, we have to look at facts. And the facts are very clear. If we look at the body, this isn't my opinions, what I just said to you all. These are these men I mean, their statements in their you, own words and their own actions. And so, so to me, we have to get working class people focused on reality and facts. That's like the article and the headline I brought up. And the thing is, 
The Bernie Sanders industrial complex thinks this guy is a god. This guy is a fucking sellout. He's not part of the rank and file. You know him. He's not. He's he's part of the bourgeoisie class. He's not part of the working class. This guy makes several hundred thousand dollars, so he's not broke. All right, here's the headline: Donald Trump's winning with union that just endorsed Biden. Former President Donald Trump received some good news from the union that just endorsed President Biden in the 2024 race. While appearing on Fox News Channel, uh, Your World with Nick with Neil Cavuto, United Auto Worker President Sean Fain spoke about the union's recent endorsement of Biden, but noted that the many members may still vote for Trump. Let me be clear, and we just saw this video, John Fain said, a great majority of our members will not vote for, great. that's a great majority. One, it's majority, meaning 50 plus one, and he's saying great, so that means more than 50 plus one will not vote for Biden. Yes, some will, but that's the reality of it. The majority of our members are going to vote for their paychecks. They're going to vote for an economy that works for them. On Wednesday, the UAW that on Wednesday, the UAW announced that it was endorsing Biden over Trump this November. We can stand up and elect someone who wants to stand with us and support our cause, or we can elect someone who will divide us and fight us every step of the way. Font Fang said in a statement. That's what the choice is about. Donald Trump winning with union that just endorsed Joe Biden. That tells you that even in the union, it's not so democratic, right? It's not so democratic.